today. <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh, we are live now. So, <laughs> hi. <laughs> Uh, if you don't know me by now, my name is Kia Baker. I am the creator and host of the Female Veterans Podcast, and I created a, a little show for the Veterans Channel called Woman Warrior Stories. I believe it's live now, so you can go to theveteranschannel.com and see my little pilot episode. To be honest, I don't know if I'm going to do more, <laughs> but I learned so much from it, and it's there. So for all of you who have been watching me on Hot Topics Live and hearing me talk about this little um, show that I was do creating for the Veterans Channel, you can go check it out. I did it. <laughs> so, right. yeah. The important part is that you've done it. Exactly. It's like a fascinating <laughs> um, experience. It was such a great learning experience for me. I will cherish it forever. Um, and it was so much fun. So go to the Veterans Channel and check that out. Um, I am here with my beautiful and darling sweetheart, Matilda. She is one of the <laughs> amazing hosts of a little show called Podcasters Unleashed. You can find that on YouTube and Facebook on their hot, their Un Podcasters Unleashed uh, page, right? Um, and you can also check her out at Coffee with Matilda, which is an amazing podcast, um, all about great conversations and growth, right, Matilda? Yes, it's about finding yourself, loving yourself, <laughs> and coming out of adversity stronger than before. Hello, <laughs> beautiful audience. <laughs> How cute is she? So uh, I love those dimples. I'm a sucker for dimples. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matilda, we have uh, a great guest today. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. I mean, uh, I'm sure your audience know about him, but now he's back with an awesome book mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. he wrote. So I'm, I'm uh, excited to see what, what's in that book. <laughs> yes. And if we have connection, can we get that book or not? <laughs> <laughs> can we get an autographed copy is what I want to yes. know. So the thing about it too is that um, this book is about inspiring your people because he's he's an expert in the field of organizational transformation, right? Mm -hmm. If you read the description of this episode, then you know that. And um, but it's about business, but this carries over to life. Because have you ever heard that you're always selling, Matilda? Yeah, um, I <laughs> I'm selling myself actually in everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you sell yourself to find a partner, you sell yourself to your friend, even sometimes you have an idea of very stupid and simple idea, or let's go to this cafe instead of this one, or mm -hmm. let's go to this movie instead of this one, or to your children, you're constantly selling them certain ideas, don't eat chocolate, eat this one, eat your broccoli instead, or eat your, I think, in or in obviously in your job, you're selling it, um, you have to sell yourself to find friends in a way you're mm -hmm. advertising yourself um so i believe all your life is about that even with connection with your siblings or parents uh, sometimes you want them to be on board with your idea but you don't know how to sell this idea to them so kind of Am I understanding this concept? <laughs> yeah, it's exactly that's exactly the concept. And yeah. the reason why I brought it up was because he talks about leadership, right? I think hold on, mm -hmm. I have a hair out of place. I'm gonna fix that. Sorry, that was driving me <laughs> nuts. Anyway, so um we talk about like selling yourself, right? And we one of the things I learned in the military, as you know, I was in the Navy, we're all taught leadership skills. Mm -hmm. And I happen to believe just as much as you sell yourself in every aspect of life, you have to be a leader in every aspect of life. So whether you are uh, in a leadership position in your organization, your corporation, or whether you are a mom or a dad, you're a leader of life. You know, even if you're a high school student or a student, you you might be even my little six year old is a leader within his classroom in kindergarten. So we have to know how to be an effective leader to be most successful in life. So we sell ourselves and we have to be an effective leader. Now, why 
uh, Fawad is amazing, Dr. Fawad Alame. He is so amazing is because his approach, I mean, he's been doing this forever and he's sensational at it. He has a podcast, um, Change Your Company, the Alame podcast, right? And he teaches people and organizations all the time how to transform and have, you know, increase profits through effective leadership. OK, mm -hmm. so this is this is about the business side. Now, what he's doing also is a heart led approach. Right. This is spectacular to me because I'm about love. OK. And if, I think you, if you infuse it in everything, everything becomes better. If you're happier, mm -hmm. if you, you're happy, you become happier when you experience more love. Right. When things are heart led and heart centered they become even better. Even if they're good, they become even better, right? So this is why his book is so brilliant and how you can take these same principles that you could uh, employ and utilize within a corporation and bring it into your personal life. So we're gonna talk about that, how to be a heart-led leader, whether it's in business or at home. What do you think? I love that. that. I, I'm, I'm actually pumped. The first thing that is coming to my mind, I'm like, Oh, yeah, I want to lead Sasha in certain areas. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure lots of times we, I, uh, maybe it's me, it's my communication skills, or I cannot sell the idea good to <laughs> Sasha. And we have some arguments. And I'm sure if I learn how to maybe understand and how to uh, manage this conversation and handle it better, I can. Uh, get him on board easier so we can our day can go smoother <laughs> you know i i love how you brought it up in regards to relationships because mm -hmm. in relationships we have to both lead at, and follow so sometimes you are going to have to be the leader for sasha and then sometimes you have to follow his lead right that's exactly. what makes relationships successful mm -hmm. and honey i've had a lot of failed relationships so i've learned a lot of lessons on how <laughs> to make it successful through learning from my mistakes. So girl, we'll have a whole episode on that and feminine energy <laughs> um, coming soon. Stay tuned for that one. Very but for nice. now, shall we bring uh, Fawad on and say hello yeah. to him? Let's bring him on. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 So tell me before we get started, where are you and what time is it? It, I'm in Basel, Switzerland, and uh, which is my base, and it's uh, nine fifteen in the evening. And Matilda, you are not in New York. <laughs> no, I'm in Paris, and it's oh, we're on the same time zone, but mm. I'm uh, yeah, yeah nine thirteen here too at night. And I am in the United States on the beautiful Pacific Northwest where it's pouring rain. So if the connection's bad, sorry, sorry about it. Um, but it is only 12, 14 p.m. And I say this to show you that this is a global show and yeah. our guests and viewers are from all around the world. And I love that. I love that community. So let's jump right into it. Do you have a question for him, Matilda, to start us well off? I have a lot of questions. <laughs> so I want to, um, first of all, I want to see what inspired you to write this book. Yeah, let's, first question is, and I have like two, three others. <laughs> yeah, um, interesting enough, I think the, the book itself, it came through um, pure inspiration. So I was writing another kind of book, and it was a uh, textbook about change and transformation, uh, which is also around leadership. But this book, uh, I got inspired to write it, and it was a, in a way it was strange. I was sitting by the river, and I would get like one word or sentence, and then suddenly I have like passage about something about leadership or about life, and uh, and then it ended up being you know like a book, and uh, this is how it started. But of course, the motivation is I always wanted to. Uh, contribute in helping, hopefully, uh, making the work workplace more fulfilling and more engaging and more inspiring. Uh, and um, and this is actually what I what I talk about it in, in the book, in the, in the introduction chapter, which is I tell a little bit about my story. And uh, like a lot of us uh, who work in corporate world, you know, it was you go through a period where it's, it's challenging, maybe it's not that inspiring. 
uh, and uh, it motivated me to do something about it in a way. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, your audience and your um, your people who are going to read it, your audience yeah. per se, yeah. is are you um, targeting on a specific audience in a specific um, corporate world or um, anyone yeah. that can be interested in leadership can pick up the book and enjoy it? Yeah, actually, I, you know, it's, uh, I was uh, I was kind of reflecting on. Um, something we were talking about before about like how could this be applied also for personal life uh, but a lot of things that I talk about in this in this book for example talk about listening I talk about coaching I talk, talk about developing people talking about being a role model for others so it applies to any any role we might have and especially even like for parenting maybe right uh, so but when it comes to the organizational context it's for uh, first line managers, uh, first time, first line, or mid ma mid level managers. Even though like they are part of the book, it even looks at how you can lead an organization and take it forward. Uh, oh, that's perfect! That's Very amazing. Nice. I want to pick up the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the the other thing about the book is that it's written. It's very light, you know, and it's written. It's uh, it's it's not written like as like full of text it's uh, it's written as passages and every topic you read a passage and it gives you the sense of it in a way and that's how it's different than other books uh, because i love reading and i love learning but i found it very challenging to stay with a book for five six hours so this book basically you can you can read it in in one hour basically and and one thing also I like is that when I read a book, it makes me want to do something. You know, I, I don't want just to understand it, but I want to feel like inspired. So I go, go, I can go out and do something about what I just read or listened to. Uh, and this is what this is about. You know, I want to read it and I want to apply it. My first task will be apply it on Sasha. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> my husband. Yeah, oh my god, yeah. you need to call husband, but my partner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, I, I mean, want to see again, how good a leader I can be at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, because I mean, the principles are the same and they apply mm -hmm. to everything, right? The principle of caring, of giving, of being there of helping you know the others become the best they could be you know and if we have this attitude in other aspects of our life it could help us for sure and i think even for example as a parent or as a partner or as a ceo of a company or a manager of a company i think your task or your obligation your first obligation is to create an environment or to give enough information or the right information and the right environment for the other person to blossom or your team to blossom so you can go up as well so even as a parent uh, if you give all the right tools to your child and inspire them to become a good leader you're gonna your your job gonna get easier uh, down line as well exactly exactly and so it's a know. shortcut <laughs> yeah 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 and this is something which is, you know, in a way, leaders are responsible for results, right? Mm. Uh, but results needs to be sustainable also. They need yeah. to be for the long term. And results should not and cannot be on the expense of the people in terms of their well-being, their mm. capabilities, uh, and their future. So, in, and, and the challenge is how can I maximize results while at the same time making the most out of my people for the future and make them feel fulfilled? So this is the dilemma of leadership, which is, I mean, anyone could maybe focus on one and drop the other, but it's, it's more challenging to, to maximize both. And I think this is, this is what I, uh, like in the book, like what I'm talking about is, and I think in the corporate world overall, there is tendency to focus more on results. And hopefully it's kind of through this, through this kind of message, it's about creating more balance and saying, you know what, we need to, we need to focus more on people so we can create that balance.
Very nice. You know, when I was coming up <laughs> in corporations, um, this was would be the most foreign type of way of leading. Um, I would say leadership was purely focused on profits. And some organizations are still that way now, and they don't really value their talent or their people enough. Therefore, they have a culture of people going to work just to collect a check. Do you think that if there's more heart-led leadership, people can really enjoy their workplace and thereby work to their best ability because they feel um, valued and appreciated for their efforts? And, and then this could ultimately increase profit for an organization? Absolutely. And there, I mean, it's not me who's saying this. There are so many studies which show this, right? So, uh, but I mean, I, I would say, and, and, and this book is about the why. This is, this is more about the why of leadership because the how, in a way, you can figure it out, right? You can, once you are inspired, you can figure out like the how. And I think Nietzsche has a, has a, has a saying, it says like, he who has a big why can figure out any how, right? So once you have a reason, you will find a way to make it happen, right? Uh, so the book, it's about the why. And, and, and I think as leaders, uh, we need to find our why and the why for the people to drive them forward, to take them to a higher place, to a better place. But I will tell you one thing, which is for the leaders themselves, the biggest fulfillment you can have is when you feel that you help people become better, achieve better, you know, and, and, and feel better. This is something which is, this is the most precious thing and most precious fulfillment you can get. Wow, that's amazing. Do you think a lot of leaders think that way? I know there's sort of a collective shift in consciousness moving towards a higher um, higher compassion and 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 just a general better well-being. But do you think that I mean this is so different than the old like industrial model mm. of leadership, right? And even coming up through the 80s, you know, the whole greed is good and drive your people to make that money. Do you think this collective shift that we're experiencing globally, this is part of that? Like where we're doing, we're seeing more conscious um, leadership w from CEOs trickling down through organizations? Uh, absolutely. I think I mean, the world is changing in, in many levels, right? I mean, you hear about the environment and how much we need to protect the environment and it's not, it's not optional anymore. Uh, I think what you what we heard like recently about Tesla, and and uh, you know how much you know you have demand on, on electrical cars is one example. Uh, is like everyone like all car manufacturers now they are going electric, you know, and and then within like five or within ten years, fifteen years there will not be any more like the traditional cars. Uh, so in the same way in the corporate world things are changing when it comes to people and. Uh, there is more demand and people have more options, right? They can choose. So they go because uh, they, they want or they will keep going because they want. Um, before, you didn't have that many options, right? Uh, and that's why I think the idea is how you can create a place which is stimulating, which fulfilling many needs at the same time, not the, just the paycheck. Because the paycheck, people will can get it in other places. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, Matilda. Uh, I, sorry, I was thinking, do you think like Google and Apple, what they've done very successfully is how to inspire the team and their people to work in this kind of environment? And, you know, all the facilities that they created, for, I've, I've heard, I'm, I never worked for them, but I've heard like Google gives you a nice cafeteria, there's a place that you can rest mm -hmm. if you're tired, or you can... Um, I mean, you can work as many hours you want because the facility is uh, catering you in that way. Do you think all of this uh, is one of the reasons of good leadership for these companies to go I mean, one of the top in the world? 
Yeah, well, I mean, I think all of these are great to have, but I think there's something which is more essential or fundamental that needs to be available. And once you have this, this luxurious stuff are not the are not the most critical. And what I mean by you want to have we want to have a working place where people are connected to each other. They feel part of mm-hmm. a community. They feel part of a one team, one family. Yeah, and. That even if there is, I mean, there is conflict, but it's constructive, it's productive, it leads to better results. And people even have good fights, but they know it's not personal. Yeah. So they, there is this sense of belonging because all of us, we need this sense of connection. Yeah. So you want to, as a leader, it's your responsibility. You cannot delegate this to other people. You need to create this sense of community. So this is one. The other one is, you want to have purpose, you want to have direction, and you want to have it clear. Everyone knows it, but everyone is even more excited to go there. Because anyone can say, you know what, like, oh, we want to go there. Yeah, and? <laughs> so you want to make people excited to go in that direction. But I'm trying to think, if you have a couple of people, teammates, and they're not that uh, excited about their job that they're do that they are doing. How, as a leader or as a manager, you can bring that excitement to the picture? I mean, is yeah. it um, giving them motivational talk every day, or creating certain tasks to certain people that suits them better? I mean, how yeah. do you um, fix that? Yeah, well, I think, I mean, it, it starts from before in a way that you, you want to have a clear vision and mission, mm-hmm. right? And then, and values. And then you want to, hopefully, like, you need to hire people who are connected to this uh, mission, vision, but especially the values, right? So if, if you, for example, a company which is selling... Uh, learning programs, right? Ideally, you want to have people who are passionate about learning, right? And so basically, uh, if if you have someone like, I mean, imagine like you have a gym uh, chain, okay, fitness chain, and you have people who don't like, you know, working out who work there. (laughs) You you really need to motivate them, right? I mean, but but this is not, I mean, you cannot, this should not be your goal. It's like they don't fit you know, to the mission of the organization, right? So ideally, you want to attract the people who are like this. i give you one example. So once I was in a hotel, one of the best hotels I've ever been to, and I've been like to hundreds. Uh, It's called Arts Hotel in Barcelona, okay? It's a luxurious hotel. And I was amazed about how the people are so friendly and serving all the time. If they see you just like wandering... They would come to you and say, like, can I help you? Is there something you need? So when I was there, I said, tell me something. I asked one of the people, tell me something. How come, like, everyone is like this? I'm just blown away. And you know what this lady, she told me? She told me they hire us as people who are already like this, who <laughs> wants to help, who are cheerful, hmm. who, who really care. Can you imagine, like, if, if you are hiring people who have this already? So you don't need to, you don't need to develop people that much anymore, right? Mm-hmm. It just, it comes to them, right? So it, it, it's natural. So that's, that's the idea is. And that's why you find a lot of the organization where the founders are there because they are so clear about the mission. They are so clear about the vision and the values. Like they attract people who are very aligned with that and the organization flourish. Oh, that's awesome. It's beautiful. You attract, you know, but you attract what you are, right? Exactly. So you find find an organization that has an amazing staff like that, then you know that the leaders are those kind of people too. And I think that's really beautiful. Um, Umar, um, Amar, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, honey. But don't don't hesitate to correct me. 
Um, okay, so Amar says, what is the difference between the mobile and the book? Are you talking about the podcast? The podcast and the book. Let, yeah, let I, me know. I, let me know in the chat. And I want to make sure. Is mm -hmm. your book in a mobile format? Uh, no, it's still not. So must, uh, it's it's only paperback so far. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he must mean the podcast. So what is the difference between the podcast and the book? Uh, my, my podcast and the book? Mm -hmm. The podcast is basically mostly uh, I, I'm I've been interviewing guests uh, talking about the topic of leadership and change. Uh, but actually, recently, I just introduced, I'm, I'm starting to read like from the book and making some reflections on it. So it will be part of the podcast as well. So, uh, yeah, so it's different in a way that there's different also views, uh, but also leaders and, and uh, professors and authors talking about the topic of uh, human-based, people-centered leadership. Amazing. Uh, Sasha, <laughs> my, my, my darling Sasha had a question. So um, let's let's put that up there. And Amar, you can, if you're if you're still around, you're welcome to ask all the questions you want, by the way. Um, so, oh, here we go. Sasha has a question. This one. Um, it's interesting to see this trend about self-improvement. Don't you think it could be dangerous in a certain way? People are more and more focusing on themselves. You don't think it is also a narcissist trend who destroyed the society, or do you consider it a positive? Can I take a, tr a, a crack at this one really quick, Fouad? Okay, so um, narcissists are bad. That's it. I will, I will preface what I'm about to say by saying that you have to use your discernment your intuition, your gut instincts, your intelligence to discern whether someone is a narcissist or not. But I just want to say something about the term being selfish. Okay. When you prioritize your own well-being and your own needs, that means you're, you, you're filling your own cup. And when your cup is full, then it can overflow and spill out to everyone around you. So there's something to be said for being a bit selfish because that means you're putting yourself and your needs first, as long as it's in a healthy and positive way, Sasha. Because you can't, you, there's a difference between caregiving and caretaking, right? Caretaking drains your energy, okay? And so you're doing, 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 because you're doing it from an empty cup. And you always feel tired and, and strained and overwhelmed, okay? But when you're taking care of yourself through self-care and self-love and you're filling your own cup first, then you're, care, you're caregiving because you're giving your excess out into the world or to those mm -hmm. around you. And that's a big difference. So I think we all should be a little bit selfish and take care of our needs and give to ourselves, And then we can give to our partners and our children. Because I tell you what, I know as a mom that when I'm on E, I'm not the best mom I can be. Okay. I'm short. I'm cranky. Like I'm impatient with my kids. And, and don't judge me because everyone who has kids know you have that moment too, <laughs> okay? I'm just being honest about mine, all right? But when, I'm, when I go and do things for myself, like go get my nails done or go get in the red light bed or <laughs> go get a massage or something like that, that fills me up, that makes me feel good that I do for myself. Or even just when my kids are with their dad and I have alone time, I can read a book or watch a movie I want to watch, <laughs> right? Because I'm always prioritizing my children, then I'm a better mother for it. So um, that's my answer. What's yours, Fouad? Well, I mean, uh, of course, I mean, the, the, the book itself, at least this one, uh, there, there, by the way, I already started with a second, uh, second book. Um, but this book is, is about like basically uh, taking care of people, right? Uh, there are a couple of chapters which are all about like you taking care of yourself so you can take care about other people, which basically resonate with what you just said, Kia. Uh, but I think, you know, if the only way you can really get this deep fulfillment is when you give your best to other people. But this, it's based on an assumption that you are at your best. So, right. And, and so the idea is how can you set yourself up to be at your best so you can give other, you know, the best of you. 
and, and this is for me the answer. You know, so it, it's it's basically the 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 inner fulfillment you get, but being at your best and giving this to the world is priceless. Mm, Sasha has another question. <laughs> I love Sasha. Uh, <laughs> He's a keeper. I see why you married him. Okay, so <laughs> we have more self-improvement, but less real interactions in our modern society. An example with the self-improvement in relationships to meet someone in life, people are feeling alone and focusing more on themselves than their real interaction society. Mm, that's a good one. You you take that one first, Vlad. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think let's kind of agree about something that self improvement is not books. You know, self improvement mm -hmm. is an attitude and way of living, mm -hmm. and uh, and and that's why I think when we expand the meaning of self improvement, which is every single day I want to be better, uh, not by necessarily reading an article or a book or listening to an audio book, but just reflecting and maybe asking for feedback and maybe taking feedback more seriously and going through life with this mindset, I think that's that's so powerful, right? Uh, but again, some people don't like to write, read books. That's fine. You know, some people will prefer like, you know, to listen to inspiring music or to go and watch an inspiring piece of theater or whatever performance. But I think the idea of saying, you know what? I don't want to go through life like this. You know, I want to go through life like always, keep growing and becoming better mm -hmm. version of them myself. And uh, and we have different way of achieving that. But by the way, it's it's a human need we have. It's a human need. That, I mean, recently I was speaking to someone and I was telling them that you know I came from the Middle East. I moved to Switzerland 13 years ago, and the purpose was I wanted to develop myself and develop, you know, character. And I knew being in this environment, it will help me to accelerate that, you know. And, and then this person was telling me like, oh, this is, this is um, like, I feel inspired by that. And you know why, why this person feel inspired by that? Because we all have this need. All of us want to improve. Some of us put it on the side some of us put it in the center. I want wow. to put it on center. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're you're right. I I don't think I could I could add to anything to that <laughs> um, explanation. So I'm going to just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> but what if there are days, for example, and I'm sure it happens to me a lot. It happens to everyone. There are some days that you really feel blue. You don't feel inspired at all. But how can you inspire you one? Let alone to inspire other people. But first, you have to inspire yourself. So how can you inspire yourself when those days are happening? I'm sure maybe there are some techniques. Mm. Well, I mean, of help. course, a lot of a lot of techniques happen. But I mean, uh, would help. But uh, I think more important. Like being inspired, and and uh, like there is one, for example, there is a section in the book which is question and answers, uh, because the whole, most of the book is written in a way as passages, but in the question, one of the question and answers, it says, "How can I inspire my people?" Right, and and the answer to this, the first, there, there are different like uh, points, but the first point is, you have to be inspired yourself, and of course, the automatic question after that is, "How can I be inspired?" Well, you need to be aligned with your values, with your mission and purpose, and you need to have a vision in life. Like you need to have a vision for yourself. If you don't have these, you will not be inspired. If you are doing a work which you hate, you cannot be inspired, right? So, and this is actually what I, what at the beginning, when I was, you know, when I started this journey, I was trying to do. I mean, it's like it's like trying to build a building. And you don't have foundation at all. It's like you. I mean, you, you can you can fool maybe like uh, other, but you cannot fool yourself. At the end, you know everything will be so clear, and people will sense it. So that's why you want to really align yourself with with uh, who you truly are, with your values, with your purpose, and and of course, I mean, for many of us, and this was the same for me. I didn't have a purpose. I didn't have a mission, 
and I was I felt lost. Uh, but when you start to taking steps in this journey of self discovery, of self development, uh, in this wider sense of the word, uh, you start to get closer to finding what's really meaningful for you, and what you are what you are willing to give your life for. You know. That's actually very very interesting because my in my podcast I'm trying to figure out. Who am I and who really inspires me? Because I believe everything starts with you and ends with you. So if you don't take care of that, I think once you're in your 60s, 70s, you're going to look back and you'll be like very depressed because you were not aligned with who uh, or what your potential could have been. And, and again, this thing about called midlife crisis. Yeah. In, in most of cases, it's about this, the misalignment. Yeah. So imagine imagine you're going in this direction, or you're supposed to go in this direction. This is like your purpose in life. So you start to drift, and then with time, you're a completely different destination. Imagine your destination is, I want to be in Hawaii, okay? And you drifted, and you are now in China. <laughs> I mean, you not And you're not in China. You, and you, you, like... you know, you, I mean, so basically, I mean, there is part of you which is that, right? Because you are not where you want to be deep down. Yeah? So, and, and this is the challenge. So at one point, at one point, the drift is so wild, wide that you feel completely lost. Right? Mm. You feel depressed. You feel like maybe angry. Uh, and, and this is the idea. It's just, you know, to, to go back and to kind of search for you know, your true north. That's Almost. actually very, very important because once you are aligned with who you are, you're inspired and you're going to work very hard and that tiredness, you're not going to feel it because it's so exciting for you to reach to your goal that um, you can put up long hours without even noticing it. Absolutely. You know, like I was talking to a friend um, a few months ago and this this friend was telling me uh, that she, like she was upset about you know the work because her colleagues are giving her like you know some more tasks and they are working later and I and I and I looked at her I said look this is not the reason you know you you need to think you need to think deeper and reflect more maybe the reason is you don't like this job at all mm -hmm. yeah you know because. I can tell you about myself, like when I was in the corporate world and doing the work I wanted to do is I wanted to have more. I wanted to do work more because the joy it was giving me, the energy it was giving me was priceless. Yeah. So I wanted more of that. Yeah. So the idea is, again, asking ourselves this question, which is, you know, what do I want to do? And for many of us, this question by itself, it, 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 it frightens us because we almost never ask it. The, the, the question we, that we usually we ask ourselves, which job is better? Which one will pay me more? You know, it's still until today, people like, you know, when I go to university, they're asking this question, well, engineering will pay me more, you know, finance will get me like better uh, career opportunities. <laughs> So yeah. Do you um, do you suggest in this book or to your students or your followers how they can find who they are? I mean, I say so they I can say, have their goals aligned mm -hmm. to who they are, their purpose. It's not it's not in this book because uh, in this one is more about kind of uh, like again inspiring people. Uh, the the second book, which is called Inspire Your Life. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about this. And I, and I think that the answer is your heart knows everything. Yeah? yeah. And of course, of course, if if we neglected listening to our heart, heart, you know, most of our life, don't we cannot expect that, you know, when we say like, hey, you know, let me give me an answer, you will get an answer right away. But I think the answer will start to come when we become more uh, determined to listen to our heart, right? So, uh, and this is something which is, and, and again, I, 
if you are asking me about again like how to find you know my purpose etc i don't think you want to be you want to sit in a cave and try to find it you know because um uh, or a temple i think you need to be in the streets of life you want to have have your hands dirty you want to try things you want to experiment you want to go to places you want to meet people you want to change jobs uh, and, and see what makes you tick because this is the ultimate test you know to find it and i, I tell you so there is a, like th- this famous author he wrote like a lot of great books called robert green uh, yeah. so, uh, he wrote mastery he wrote a I think 48 laws of power and he has production a, yeah exactly <laughs> production as well yeah and uh, he talks about uh, his journey he has a TED talk which talks about this and he, I mean until his 40s he was lost yeah. yeah and imagine he tells a story even like one I think uh, publisher maybe uh, he, he invited him for lunch or dinner and told him look this thing about writing Please forget it. You are not meant to write. Mm. But then, but then, when he found the niche, where to write, everything fell into place. Yeah. He's an he is an amazing writer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It would it would have been shame if he didn't. He stopped it and listened to the publisher. Exactly. I'm in the journey of finding my purpose. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think it, it, the idea is it, it's a gradual. It's not something mm. like, for example, I've been doing this work, which is developing leaders and people and organizations. And, and it's been extremely fulfilling. But now with a, the with a book and the books that's coming. And, you know, I have, I have a book launch event next week here in Basel. And uh, it's kind of like, for me, it's like, I know this is a big part of my life purpose, right? Mm. Uh, but, and, and it, it could be become even more uh, a part of my life than doing programs maybe, right? Uh, but the idea is, you know, every step on this journey becomes more exciting. And, uh, it's, and, and, and the idea is, you know, just being curious, being curious, like, okay, where will this t- take me? And have the courage to follow it. Yeah, have the courage to follow it. But I think, look, at one point, actually, you know, it just the courage will will come also. Like with Mm. with when you when you start to taste the fruit of these steps, you cannot resist it anymore. It just it's so delicious that you say, you know what, I want more of that. (laughs) True. So for me, for example, I I I I freaked. I mean, I used to freak out being in front of people. Right, but when I realized that this was part of my mission, I, I, I started to develop myself, and and I love it. Now we cannot take you away from the stage. Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. Now you're a star. <laughs> How about that? Uh, Sasha asked a great question. I'm going to throw it back up here. I removed it because it's really takes up a lot of space, but um, we're going to throw it up here really quick. And we're going to see what Sasha's talking about. Um, He says, Jordan Peterson sees a lot of young men lost in life without any goal. Do you think self-improvement is born due to the lack of structure of our modern societies? People are lost with a society who is moving very fast. Some are, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think think self-improvement is a result of the fact that we reach a stage in our society human evolution where we have all our basic needs met Mm. so before before like making a living was a challenge today it's given you know even if you don't have a job i mean in in certain countries you got support like so you can eat you can drink you can enjoy the basic things of life but now we are hungry for more and self-improvement is a way to fulfill that the sense of purpose, the sense of development, the sense of contributing beyond ourselves in different ways. Uh, this is this is what why why self improvement I think today is uh, more relevant and more uh, uh, popular, you know, among yeah. a lot of people. 
you know, uh, Faud, I think um, it's very right what you're saying because when um, if I look at my grandparents' time, they, I mean, there are so many other disasters happening in the world and there is no money and people are, have to, they are on a survival mode that you cannot even think about self-improvement. I mean, that concept doesn't even come. You mm -hmm. just want some food and to get mm -hmm. by. But now, because life is very comfortable, now you're like, okay, what is my potentials? What exactly. I can do more. And before, if people have done amazing things, it's because maybe they were lucky or um, they were so in tune um, psychologically with their own mission and with their own heart that they understood, I'm sure, who they are. But uh, normal people took them, I mean, normal people wouldn't even think about it. Now, normal people think about it because... You know, we're comfortable. Absolutely. I mean, I give you one example. I, I dedicated this this book to my father, and uh, to because my father he never had the chance to finish his schooling, and uh, his his father he took him out of school because uh, he he needed support basically, right? So so he's a self made man, and and but he, he embedded in me this 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 like uh, continuous learning. Mm. Uh, and uh, so basically he didn't have a schooling yet for example me and my brother uh, my brother we had a chance we finished schooling and we did university also right but now if you look at my my nephew mm -hmm. uh, and my niece they they are going to school and they're doing all this kind of activities they are playing music instrument they're going doing sport they're doing all this so this is the evolution that we are going through right so there is there's more. There's more to experience. There's more to explore. And it's exciting. And, and that's why I, I don't believe in this idea that the world is going for the worse. The world is ultimately going for the better. Mm. And I think we need to be, we, we need to look at the big picture, right? And the big picture is you cannot every time there is a little bit decline say, oh, it's got, everything is going worse and worse. Well, look at the big picture. See the trend. The trend and it's not me who's saying this. A lot of scientists are saying this. There's so much improvement, and we are at some of the best time of human uh, yeah. history. Harari uh, is saying we are the most amazing time because people, uh, we have people die more from a suicide than anything else in the world. That means... I mean, we don't have hunger. We don't. I mean, that much compared to to centuries ago. We don't have. Um, we have cure for diseases. So um, exactly. now we're bored in a way. We want to harm ourselves. So <laughs> the conditions are in this which, level. Which, which is, by the way, which is a basic human need. The basic human mm. need we have the need for variety and change, right? Mm. And when you have so much stability, you start to seek it either in a uh, productive way or destructive way. Yeah. Right? So destructive way would be like, again, like uh, too much alcohol, drugs. Drugs, yeah. Like, you know, like all kinds of things which are fulfilling the same need, but in a way which is not healthy, right? So yeah. we, 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 need, we, we have this need inside us. And that's why, again, today, uh, and in the workplace also, like as leaders, you want to create a space, place which is uh, like, um, how to say it, like it's in inspiring, but also um, challenging and, and, and in a way changing, but in an exciting way. Yeah. And, and this is this is a challenge of leadership. So I have a question. We talked a lot about organizational leadership and how this applies, but what are what are some of the the things that we can do in our personal lives how can we apply this book personally yeah uh, well i think so i tell you so in the in the book the book like it has like different sections and uh one of them is about the the mindset uh, the mindset of of leadership and the mindset of leadership is in a way uh that we are all leaders in a way Right. So, uh, and there is one passage which which says like leaders are neither born nor made; they are self-made. Right. 
And the idea is you build yourself, you know. And um, uh, so that and, and the fact that you know, the, like it's it's about the people around you. And of course, this works for leader or applies for leader, but it also applies for us in our personal life. The more we are self-centered and we more like so think about me, 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 me all the time, you know, the more we will lose like the direction or the compass, uh, which will give ultimate fulfillment. And, I, and, and don't get me wrong. I still believe that taking care of ourselves is extremely important. I think it should not be even a question. Uh, uh, as a way to help others, uh, but uh, so this is one thing which is about the mindset, uh, and 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 the second thing, the second section of the book, it's about purpose, having a purpose, and making it the compass, uh, and and it's something like you live up to, uh, uh, and then the third one, which is also applied to all of us, it's about leading yourself, leading yourself, and I think this is a foundation. So you can start to lead other people. So leading self, and which includes developing yourself and having this daily habit, which could build, you know, great character, which equal your life. Well said. Uh, Sasha has another question, but you go first, Matilda. <laughs> I was thinking, do you have, I mean, do you look at the co different cultures as well? Like your book, I'm sure in America, will be very exciting and very, it will be, because the concept is there. The people are very open to uh, self-improvement and they, they love the concept of leadership and uh, leading in a from a powerful point but for example in other cultures do you think they might not look at this book in that way or not do you have a do you know how, where you want to sell your book more or do you have have you thought about that no i mean from that perspective geographically no i mean uh, i think that the what the book explores uh, is something which is connected to all cultures. Of course, there are some cultures where this is more evident or it's more sought after. Uh, but I think ultimately everywhere. I mean, just give you one example. So if you look at the Middle East, uh, Dubai uh, just announced mm -hmm. that they're going to have four and a half working days, not five working days anymore, right? So two Isn't and a half amazing? days. So, so <laughs> again, you know, so, so you can see that there is like a policies and measures which is, which are all about like how, how can we take care of people right yeah uh, and, and and this is it's, it's a trend right uh, so that's why I think this book really and uh, it's it's something which is um, I think it it would resonate with people from all kinds of cultures and again the way it's written, uh, it's and I don't want to make promotion for the book, but I mean, let me make it anyway. Uh, the, <laughs> way, the, 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 the way it's written is like it's like passages. So basically, I go and I I can, for example, this passage is called "Showing as my best." I show up for my people. I show up every day, full of energy, full of passion, full of excitement. I show up for them, for the mission, for the vision. I show up as my best self, inspired, empowered. I show up every day for them. I show up every day for my people. So it's kind of poetry too. It's like an affirmation, like a poetic yeah. affirmation. <laughs> yeah. So, but but I think so. Basically, you can you can go and read like one passage, and you can reflect on it, or you know you can you can pick one thing which is about listening, for example, uh, or about purpose, and you can read it. Or, for example, meetings. I mean, a lot of people say, especially in the corporate world, our meetings are a waste of time. I mean, meetings are your best shot to create a sense of community, to create yeah. engagement, to create like sense of clear vision and purpose and people excited to go in a certain direction together, right? So, but, but what happened is we abused it or we misused it. So people started to hate it. But if you go to a meeting and everyone is engaged, and everyone is connected, and everyone's discussing and, and, and coming up with solutions and way doing things better. Everyone will be, will be so energized Absolutely. to go there, right? So, so, yeah, I mean, I think this is the idea, which is like a, 
to, for example, passage about meetings, passage about coaching. I mean, for example, coaching. We talk a lot about like, you know, the how coaching. But let's talk about the why of coaching. You know, why you want to coach people? Because you want to develop their own strengths. So when you are not around, they can face the challenges so they can become tomorrow's leaders, right? When you are not around. So you can give them something which will stay with them forever. This is more important, you know? And then the how, you will find it. You know, the how is not to give them the answers. You can ask them questions. You can put them in a challenging situation and make them reflect. Very good. Yeah. I'm, uh, do you think you're going to have, I mean, can we buy it? Where we can buy it? So it's, uh, it's available on Amazon and um, uh, as a paperback right now. Uh, Amazon just launched actually the, the hardcover. So I just got like my proof copy uh, for the hardcover. Ah, for the hardcover. So, this is exciting. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, it's. Uh, I think they just launched it, you know. Now, so I was excited about like seeing it in hard, in hard copy as well, uh, and I will be record. It will be available on Kindle as well, and then I will be recording the audio book version of it. And honestly, I mean, when I will re record the audio book, uh, I want to record it in a way that my whole intention and purpose is. I I, I want it to be so inspirational, so anyone who leads people. Uh, and even not leading people can listen to it and feel they want to do something. You know, they want to, so on the way to work, they go and listen to it and they go and they give the best uh, to their, to the people and to their environment. Mm, that's awesome. And when really is that going to come out? So, uh, yeah, so I haven't, I haven't recorded yet, but it will be around, you know, new year. Uh, so it will be in January. Yeah. And, and actually, the, when I'm reading the passages, I will have like some uh, like very soft music in the background. Uh, so, yeah. Speaking of music, um, before I jump into Sasha's last question, you play music. You're actually gifted as a poet, but also a musician as well. Will you, you be playing the music? And not for this one. I think it will complicate it a little bit. <laughs> because, <laughs> so much work. Because, yeah, yeah. No, but I think it's it's part of my life, of course. And uh, like music is big, big part of my life. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I play it, and I have like a lot of ideas which I I develop throughout the years. Uh, I still don't know how original they are, but um, maybe at one point they could be, you know, mixed with this work. But at, at this moment, no. Yeah. Is this your first book, Tariq? Yeah. This is my first book, yes. Yeah. Ah, how yes. excited so you are. Have yeah, you celebrated? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I have many times. Oh, good. <laughs> I'll awesome. continue also. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm all about. I yeah. love a reason to celebrate. I'm yeah, celebrating exactly. with you. I'm going to celebrate you today, actually, and I'm going to drink champagne, just so you know. <laughs> okay, in your honor. <laughs> in your book. I love to see my students succeeding and I am so honored that London Real Thanks. brought us together Thank and um, that I get to see you continue to inspire others and grow and do more and more amazing things. So this is Thanks. phenomenal. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. I mean, you've been, you've been a great uh, inspiration and help and oh. uh, mm -hmm. like throughout the program uh, when we were doing the, the podcast and uh uh, you you inspire that by the way you listen and you care and you help and you give from place from your heart. Oh, thank you, sweetie. I appreciate. See, you what so happens much. when you care as a leader when you care, <laughs> you create leaders that inspire others <laughs> <laughs> to Absolutely. lead with their heart because it's my Absolutely. favorite thing in the whole world and Absolutely. this is just amazing and I hope a lot of people got uh, your message today and and got so much from what you're doing and will go get your book because I happen to have heard many of the passages before they became a book. I was so lucky yeah. to hear that. And um, remember the story of when, I mean, this book was like divinely inspired in my opinion. So I won't get into the whole story of all yeah. of that, but if, you, if you're into that th kind of thing and you believe that, then know this message is so special and so divine that you just have to run out and get this book and see what it's all about. It's really beautiful. 
So thank you. Um, thank you. I love it. <laughs> Order it on Amazon, people. Order it <laughs> Go to Amazon. Amazon. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna um we're gonna do Sasha's question. Um, because we we are just about at an hour. Um, we have about ten minutes left of this show. So um. Sasha, you are so incredibly interesting. He says, so we don't need a tyranny to lead the new world, but more free people who are working on themselves to build a new society. You don't think it's not the real human nature and you underestimate the dark part. Humanity is also a battle of powers and ego. Can I just try this one first? Please. <laughs> so, oh my God, Sasha, you're so darling. Yeah, you could look at the evils of the world and that could be your focus and you'll attract more and more evil into your life um and you'll be so aware of how evil the world is listen i live in the united states okay and i am i don't know what they call us anymore a woman of color am i a black woman i don't know the terms change all the time okay so being that that's what i am living in the united states i could live in literal terror of my life all the time right i could be constantly afraid of the police Right, right. You feel me on this one. I could have my sons who are also pigmented, melanated. I don't know what you want to call it. They're biracial <laughs> and I'm raising men. And as you know, there are a lot of men being killed by the cops in this country of a certain background um, for whatever reason. So I could, I have to teach my son safety, right? This is my example. Now I could teach them to be afraid of the police and focus on all of these negative things that are happening in our country, country that I love very much, by the way. Um, or I could recognize that in this world, there's the balance. There's dark and light, good and evil. And it's what I wanna focus on. It's not that I'm pretending that there's not troubles around and people are can be evil and awful and horrible. It's evidenced in our news media all the time here in the States. And you probably see it wherever you are. Okay. And think yeah, all of those poor Americans. <laughs> right? like, my, my darling Emma, my vocal coach is always like, oh, you guys. But what can I say? I love this country. Right. And I have to take the bad with the good of it and try to make the best of it. In my reality, which is part of this grander reality. Right. I dwell on the good things the good in people. And I look for it. So therefore, when I have an interaction with a police officer, I have a good experience because I'm looking for the good in people. Therefore, that's what I attract to me. I'm not looking for it. Do I have a bad experience? Are people rude to me sometimes? Yes. And you know what I do? I feel sad for them. And I, and I, and I say a little, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really the praying sort, but I say like a little wish for them, perhaps. Um, some people would say a prayer. And I say, I hope that they heal. Because hurt people hurt people. Broken people break people. And that's kind of what where I stand on it. I, I look for the best in others. I try to be my best and present that to the world. And, um, and, and that's, you know, negative energy is the most infectious thing in the world. So it takes a lot of us this new society that you see, we're like sort of dreaming up or trying to become. There's so many of us now in this, this collective that are focused on the good, that we're balancing out those dark energies more and more and more. And then the dream, I think for me at least, is for one day for it to be a little bit more light than dark. Um, but that's just me. What do you think? What do you guys think? I think the world is amazing as it is. Okay, but we have bad people, we have good people, we have dark days, we are light days. Everything is in balance. Mm -hmm. God created uh, day and God created night as well. Everything, is, whatever you see, there is another side of it as well. And there is this dark side of it. Actually, I don't see there is a problem. Um, I mean, it's unfortunate. The wrong things are happening in the world. But it has been happening from the beginning of the human history and if we're gonna think about all oh, bad things gonna happen we cannot even leave the house because an mm -hmm. accident can a car can hit us we cannot even send our children to school because what a, a classmate might go crazy and come and shoot them it happens but what can we do i mean um i rather live a, a positive life 
And trust me, France is not a very positive country in that sense. They look at the negative part and they make things, they make it floss, they philosophize the negative part a lot. It's a cultural thing, and I, th I think because of the French Revolution and all that. But I like America in that sense. People are light. They take things lighter. Because what are you going to do? Live in a dark place? No, honey, come and live in the light place. <laughs> <laughs> That's not <Yeah>. sense. <laughs> but what do you think about? <laughs> well, I think, I mean, look. Um, there are a lot of people who talk about, um, you know, the wrong and the bad, and, and, and we, we agree that it exists. But I think there is a difference between doing something about it and talking about it, right? So I think if you are sincere about improving things, and, and I'm talking about, like, anyone, right? Uh, including myself, because sometimes I, I, I fall in that trap as well, which is, you know, I, I, I look at things I cannot control or influence, and I'm kind of like stuck about like why they are the way they are, or they should not be the way they are. Well, create the opposite, you know, go out and take a step to create the opposite. Otherwise, focus on something else. <laughs> so I think that that's for me, and and, uh, and maybe... In that sense, uh, you know, I, I could cons describe myself maybe being naive that, you know, I'm, I'm more optimistic. I'm optimistic about life. I'm optimistic about the world. I'm optimistic about human nature and uh, our evolution. And I think uh, if we look in the history, we see that uh, we came a long way. And we still have a long way to go, but we cannot expect it to be overnight. And we cannot also expect it to happen if we don't take part of it and make it better. Hmm. Well said. I'm meant to that. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been so, so, so fun and incredible. Um, and I want to share something with you guys that's a little bit off topic before we say our farewells, because we have about four minutes left of this episode. Um, so I'm really excited to announce that I have um, a sponsor for my podcast. Um, it is called uh, gruntstyle.com. Um, I have another partnership coming up. Uh, soon as well. And I'm sharing it here because you can't see my podcast, the Female Veterans Podcast. Okay. But I want to show you this cute t shirt. Can you see it? Oops. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Let me figure it out. There we go. Okay. Now you can see it. Okay. It says Shh, freedom is speaking. Okay. So it's by this cute company called Grunt Style. This is like their logo. And, um, and they're really awesome. <laughs> they're super patriotic of you like that sort of thing. Or if you like cute t-shirts and apparel of that nature. And so I'm really excited to partner with them. Um, and so I want everyone to go and check out their stuff because they have stuff for men, women, and children. And um, it's gruntstyle.com. I will put it in the chat. And you can use my last name, Baker, as a code to get a discount. I'm really excited about that, you guys. I've never had that happen before. And I've never created a podcast to, to have a sponsor just to help people. So it's a fortunate side effect of trying to serve others, I guess, is they say that's how you make money. And I think that it's true because it's happening to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just sharing it with you guys because, well, I love you. And I think you're awesome. And I'm happy about it. <laughs> So anyway, um, okay, so before we go, any more questions, Matilda? Well, I have a lot of questions. I don't know, do we have time? or We, need to <laughs> we have to... time for one more. <laughs> so if you want me as a listener or as a reader to take one message that I can use it in my daily life to become my own leader, because sometimes life leads me, I don't lead my life to become a better leader for my parents, for my children, for my workplace, what will be? I, I think it will go back to this uh, idea of being aligned with who you are and what you, what's meaningful for you uh, and, and uh, what you're passionate about. 
and uh, aligning your life with it. I mean, aligning the way you use your time, aligning it by the work you do and the people you spend time with uh, and, and the place you want to be at. So I think this is, it goes down to this one. Uh, and then, of course, the other one would be to continuously grow. Uh, uh, so I think this, this would be the, you know, the best. And of course, the other one would be making the most out of life. I think, uh, you know, it, it's, and I have to say, I'm, I'm, sure I'm saying it like, you know, like to you, but I'm saying it first to myself and reminding myself of this truth, which is, you know, we have most precious gift, you know, called life. And, and I think so we, we always take things for granted when we have abundance of them. So we have abundance of moments and these moments are so precious and sometimes we, we lose sight of that and we don't appreciate them enough and we don't savor them enough. And I think, you know, uh, but I think you are, you are an example of this, Matilda. So you, you, you like how you embrace life and you, you're, you're, the way you, you talk about things and the way you approach things, it's an example about like being cheerful and, and seeing the best out of, you know, situation and out of life. So I think that's what I would say. It's a, just being true to ourselves and growing and enjoying and savoring and appreciating life. I'm on it. I'm going to start, I'm going to finish my 2021 strong and I will start my 2022 stronger. NFT is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking classes. Uh, <laughs> deep <high> class. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. It's a well, good course. I love the course, I will tell you. Um, and it teaches you so much. So um, I can't say enough good things about it. <laughs> Great. You go make that success in that world of crypto, Matilda, and um, create an amazing future for yourself. Oh, Opportunity. Guys, I'm looking at the future billionaire. Yeah. No, it's like a millionaire. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it, hey, if you've decided that you're going to be a millionaire, I'm, I'm cheering for you. I've decided that for myself also. <laughs> so why right. not? It happens to people. Why not you? Right. Exactly. <laughs> We're great leaders. That's right. <laughs> when you make a practice of helping people, you you build good karma and good things come back to you. So why sure. not? Right. Manifest it. It's manifestation 101. So mm -hmm. uh Fouad, thank you so much for being a guest on Hot Topics Live today. I think you are absolutely amazing and I can't wait right. to have you come back again. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me with you. Thank you, Matilda, for uh, all the questions and the reflections that you shared. And thank you, Kia, for having me. Um, oh, my pleasure. Thank you, Paolo. And thank Sasha, you. I think, thank you, too. Yeah, thank and you, Sasha. Yeah. Thank you, questions. Sasha. <laughs> it's thank you. Made you challenging, challenging questions, but uh, like, uh, like enjoy them a lot. Like, thank you so much. Because I, I'm sure... <laughs> But these questions are on a lot of people's mind. And uh, that, so thank you for share, sharing them. Oh, I love your question, Sasha. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. You know, I, I love um, intelligence, too. It's very exciting for me to get to connect with people who, who are asking really good intellectual questions and really interested in the material that we're putting on out here because it's a different topic every week <laughs> and um and there's so much to to connect with and learn from all of our amazing guests like you and um and it's such a pleasure to have someone interested and curious and willing to um, be brave and put their questions out there for the world to see so thank you for that <laughs> And um, with that, I guess we're going to wrap it up. So, Fouad, I'm going to put Thanks. you in the green room. Is there anything else you want to say before I do? Thank you. I just, I mean, again, I wish all the listeners the best. And uh, I think being inspired and inspiring others is a gift. Uh, we give ourselves and the world. So I, I wish them this, a gift of inspiration. Absolutely. Well said. Beautiful. Okay. I'll see you in a minute for a proper goodbye. If you can wait, I know it's late for you. If not, I will understand. And you know, I'll catch up with you because I always do. <laughs> bye for now, sweetie. Bye. Bye, Matilda. Bye. Bye-bye.
Ooh, that was awesome. That. <laughs> that was really fun. I forgot that I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna order my mine on Amazon very soon. <laughs> yeah. Today or tomorrow, I should order it. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I'm definitely going to get a copy because I always um, support my students and um, as much as I can, right? Um, so I'm really excited about that. And um, it was a great time chatting and hanging out with both of you today. Um, yeah. So what do you guys have coming up on Podcasters Unleashed on Monday? Oh, I'm the host, <laughs> and I'm talking about <laughs> cryptocurrency. <laughs> I'm like, I'm taking the class, might as well talk about it. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I'll have to do my best to tune in for that one if I can. Mm -hmm. We're going to see, is crypto going to stay? What is the future like? And uh, why is this happening in the world? So we're going to talk about that. You know, it reminds me of when the internet became a thing. And people mm. would say, this internet thing, do you think it's going to last? <laughs> <laughs> so I love the topic. I think it will help a lot of people and, and give them a lot of information. And I know that you're learning a lot. So you're like sort of down the rabbit hole in a crash course of intent, <laughs> not <laughs> fact finding and learning and, um, and integrating all this knowledge. So I think you'll be really beneficial to help a lot of people. It's wonderful. I... Um... I was hearing crypto, obviously, here and there. Uh, I was hearing about NFT here and there. But now my life in these two weeks, every day is about crypto. And I'm like, what happened? I left my life before. <laughs> now it's like very confusing. But I, I'm sure it's worth it. It's, mm -hmm. it's a difficult concept. But I think once you understand it and grasp it, it's the future. So. Absolutely. If my two cents, it's not going anywhere. It's only going to grow. And right now, um, the common person can get involved. But my this is my prediction. Just my prediction, my opinion. Okay. I preface that as my disclaimer. I think we will see a time where the common person like you or myself would be priced out. So it is very confusing right now. There is a lot to learn, but very worth learning, you know, and I had a lot of great questions posed to me this weekend by some friends visiting me from Chicago when I was advising them on what to get and what to do. Yeah. Um, but I will say, check out all the new episodes of London Real at LondonReal.tv or on YouTube and start learning. Those are the places to learn there. I mean, I know I'm a loyalist for London Real. Um, I've been with the organization for two years, over two years. But these shows about definance and cryptocurrency could change lives if you listen, listen to them repeatedly, mm -hmm. and then go, go do stuff in that world. So you're in the right place at the right time, Matilda. And I'm super excited for you. <laughs> So. I'm super excited myself too, but confused. I'm confused, excited. <laughs> you know what? It just comes with time. The more, I mean, I, I mean, there's always something more to learn and it's constantly evolving and changing. So even once you think, even for me, I've been doing this a little bit, well, a little while now, I'm still learning and then things change. All of a sudden there's a new wallet or there's a new this or a new way to do that. And you have to really stay on top of it. So because it's ever evolving and I think it's going to be that way for at least 10 years. So, wow. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited for you too. <laughs> um, so I'm looking forward to that episode on, on Monday. What time is it on Monday? It's uh, 7 p.m. London time. 2 p.m. Um, Eastern time. Perfect. And you can also, you can watch it live. It's on Facebook, YouTube, and you can listen to the podcast anytime, um, anywhere you listen to podcasts, just like I've got right there. Right, Matilda? Yes. Podcasters <laughs> Unleashed. <laughs> We're waiting for you guys Monday. <laughs> and don't forget to check out Coffee with Matilda. Yeah. <laughs> so that's an excellent show as well. And you can if you can't get enough of Matilda, go go do that. You can listen to that <laughs> anywhere you listen to podcasts as well. So Thank it's you. been a great show today. I've really loved it. Hi, George. Thanks for tuning in. George, can you text me your YouTube channel? I keep going to look for it and I don't think I'm spelling it right. 
So, cause I want to make sure I'm subscribed. So <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. um, send it to me via Instagram. Okay. Um, and as always, thank you for all your comments um, and your messages, your direct messages through Facebook. For those of you who have been messaging me, I know I'm behind in responding. I have a lot going on. You have no idea. And um, but I will get to it. And all of you around the world that don't speak English <laughs> and using <laughs> sending me like well, like you don't write it well. Thank you for all the pictures. <laughs> like the cute gifts with the hugs and the, the roses and all of that cute stuff. <laughs> it really touches my heart. If you would like to uh, follow me, here, this is how you do it. Do, please do not send me a friend request on Facebook. I'm never on Facebook, to be honest with you. I'm on Instagram. So if you really want to connect with me, connect with me on Instagram. Okay. And that's how you do it. So if you want to send me a message, do it that way. As long as it's respectful, I'll probably respond to it. <laughs> um, but um, that's how that's done. So with that, I'm going to wrap up the show. We'll be back next Wednesday with another great conversation, or sorry, Thursday with another great conversation for you. And um, I don't know who my guest host will be. I might beg Matilda to come back if she's free. And <laughs> we'll <Yeah>. see. <laughs> And we'll see you from there, but enjoy your holiday season if you celebrate it. And I'm sending you so much love. Anything else from you, Matilda? No, that's it. Lots of love and enjoy your date and be inspired. That's and right. Amazon for the book. <laughs> Go get that book. Inspire <laughs> your life. <laughs> and inspire and... <laughs> Christmas people. It's a good Christmas gift. That's right. It's Christmas time, right? So go get that book. Inspire your own life. Inspire your people. <laughs> okay. Inspire everyone around you. Mm -hmm. And, um, and well, we love you guys. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> Bye.